What if I told you that while the police are giving field sobriety tests for DUI, they routinely ignore everything about the real field sobriety tests? Hi, I'm Northern Virginia criminal defense attorney Scott Nolan, and I'm here to talk to you about the real field sobriety tests. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I always say never, ever do any of the police's field sobriety tests. Don't walk a straight line, don't touch your nose, don't follow a pen or a light with your eyes. Don't say the alphabet, don't do any of it. You're not required to by law, don't do it. It cannot help you. But at the same time that you're doing all of those so-called tests, these weird dexterity exercises that you've never done before, and had no opportunity to practice, you're doing all sorts of ordinary motions that you do every day. It would be just as easy to see whether in, you are intoxicated by looking at your ordinary movements. And that's almost always ignored by the police. The one time it's not ignored by the police is when you really are drunk and they can use those ordinary motions to further their idea that you're, you are intoxicated. When you're pulled over by the police, the first thing the officer is going to do is maybe talk to you a little bit. They're gonna ask for your license and registration. Now, maybe you're like me and you have it ready and you're gonna hand it to the officer the moment they come to the window, or maybe you wait to be told and you get your wallet out and you reach over and you pull out of the wallet your ID and you reach over to the glove compartment. If you're belted in like me, then you're gonna take a little while to get there, but you open it, you find where you've got your registration, you pull out the registration and you hand it to the officer. Every one of those steps shows an understanding of what the officer has requested it shows that you are not fumbling. It shows that you've got control over large and small muscle groups. But that's never reported to the judge or the jury. That's never included on the police report, is it? Now look, I'm not talking about somebody who's just completely drunk, three sheets to the wind. If they look like they ought to be on cops and they're stumbling back and forth and babbling, we all know they're drunk, but that's not what happens in these cases. What happens in these cases is they give you some phony baloney test and they'll say, oh, well, he didn't take the right number of steps or he didn't listen closely when I told him to turn to the left, he turned to the right and therefore he's drunk. Let me tell you, if I give those tests, to a bunch of ordinary sober people, say at your office, most if not all are going to fail. But all of those people can get a pencil out of a drawer and walk across the, the floor. All of those people can open doors and sit down in a swivel chair because these are things they've practiced. But trust me, if they were drunk, they would not do those things as well. So these are the real, the real sobriety tests. When the officer asks you to get out of your car, do you slide out and onto the floor? Or do you get up, get out like every single other time? When the officer talks to you, are you laying back across the car or standing up listening? When the officer says that for your safety, he's gonna ask you to walk to the back of the vehicle because that's where they do field sobriety tests. You have to walk down past the car, make a left-hand turn and get behind the car. Do you get all of that right or do you wind up in the middle of the roadway? All of these things are ordinary motions that you do every day and which if you were intoxicated, you would not do so well. Those are the real field sobriety tests. If you're on a jury and you're listening to testimony about someone's inability to put their foot directly one in front of the other, 
nine times. Oh, on step seven, he stepped off a little bit. And you think that's intoxication? You have drunk the Kool-Aid. You are truly listening to the police and not your common sense. If on the other hand, the person could not walk to the back of their own car or could not stand up or couldn't find their license and act, you know, gave the police officer a library card instead, now you have a much better indication of that person's sobriety. The real field sobriety tests, they ought to be the focus of every single DUI trial. If you'd like to talk about the real field sobriety tests or any other area of the law, please feel free to call me. I'd be very happy to talk to you about it. And you have a good day.